macros are a really cool way of making your code a little bit more human readable. Uh, I'll show you how to put some macros into your document in this video. And just for something different, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to click on this button over here, the full screen button. And that allows us to see just the PDF, or if we click back, back here in this green button, just the code. Um, all right, so very often when we're writing a math paper, we might want to put in something like the set of integers. The set of integers is, so I'll go into maths mode here and by putting some dollar signs there and in between those dollar signs, I'm going to go forward slash math BF as in boldface math type. And I'm going to put a capital Z in there. This is the way that I like to do it. So I'll just flick back over here to my PDF and I'm going to compile and see what we get there. The way I like to do it is I like to put boldface type like that. Now, some people prefer to use blackboard bold. It's really a personal preference sort of thing. But if you're in that camp, then you would write math blackboard BB instead. So when we come over here and compile the document, we'll get that double struck Z. Um, as I say, that's sort of, you know, just a personal preference sort of thing. Um, okay, but I'm going to go back to math BF. Now, that's a bit of a, a hassle to type that out every single time. So what we can do instead is we can come up to our preamble. And somewhere in here, we can put in some macros. So I might just plop them down in here. And the way that we do it is we go forward slash new command. And you can see we've got a couple of different options here. We want the second of these options here. We don't want the one with the square brackets just now. We want this one right here. And in this first set of curly brackets, this is what we're going to be typing in our code. So forward slash capital Z is what we want to type in our code. And that is going to invoke whatever we put here. So forward slash math BF Z like that. Okay, and, and then when we come down here, instead of writing this, so with a macro, it's, so still need to go into maths mode, of course, but now we just write forward slash capital Z, and we are going to get what we desire here. Okay, so that's just one example of how a macro can help us uh, sort of, not only cut down on keystrokes, but make our code a little bit more human readable as well. Uh, the beauty as well of, of macros is suppose you'd written a very, very long document or a book even, and uh, you had been putting this in everywhere. And then you went to the publisher and they said, hey, we want uh, double struck um, blackboard bold for, <laughs> for those sorts of things. You'd have to find every single thing. But here, all you need to do is change your definition of your macro. And now when you recompile it, every instance of that where you've written forward slash Z, it's going to change over there. So that could be a real, real handy thing <laughs> to save you a bit of time um, if, you, if you do things via macros. All right, what would be another example? Um, what we're trying to do, I think I'm getting this term right. I think we want to write uh, semantic code. We want to write code that means uh, what it says. So instead of writing suppose we want to write the mean of x or something we're doing statistics it's easy enough to put that over over line over x so we could go forward slash over line um, and then here put x like that i don't know if you've come across that notation yet but it's it's pretty common in calculators and statistics textbooks to indicate, oh yeah, that's the mean of x there. So instead of writing that, what we can do is we can define a macro and our code will actually mean what it says. So let's come up here into our preamble and let's put in a new command. And this time we will want the, uh, the square brackets there um, because those square brackets are where we're going to put our options. So here in our code, we're going to write forward slash mean there's going to be one option and the thing that it will invoke is forward slash overline 
and in curly brackets we're going to put that f number one we're going to put that first option okay number one all right so a better option ooh, option is in maths mode uh, forward slash the mean of x and that that x is that number one now that's the the first thing that we're writing you can you can set up macros with more than one option by the way but very often one option is all you need so yeah they're actually going to typeset the same they're going to look exactly the same to the reader's perspective but to the coder's perspective or anyone we're collaborating with this is going to mean a lot more than this after all in maths we use overlines all the time for various different things um, and it doesn't necessarily um, tell us exactly in this instance what it is okay one last thing that i think i might put in here um, let's do one with two options so in an earlier video in this series we looked at how we can grow our brackets around fractions all right so earlier we saw i'll just come down here just for something different so this is a different way of going into maths mode this way of course is where we are displaying our maths as opposed to inline maths so this maths will be on its own line so suppose we put in forward slash frac um one over two let's say when we compile that what we're going to get is a nice big fraction a displayed fraction and because it's being displayed it's going to be fairly large like that so as we saw in the earlier video ordinary brackets yes they're fine you can put in ordinary brackets um, but some people don't like that uh, and i'm probably in that camp just because they look a little bit too small these brackets so you remember what we did to make them grow we said forward slash left this bracket i'm going to give myself a bit of breathing room here you don't need that forward slash right okay and now these brackets are going to just grow as big as our fraction grows like that of course though there's a lot of writing that we need to do here all right so why don't we define a macro okay so that we've got parentheses around those fractions right there so Let's put in a new command and we want the one with the, the square brackets now. And what we're actually going to write in our code is we're going to write forward slash P frac as in parentheses fraction forward slash P frac. And we're going to put in two options. And basically I'm just going to copy that code that we put in there before, but instead of, sorry, Instead of these arguments that we had before, we want to put in a number one and a number two in the sense of this is the first thing and this is the second thing. So perhaps actually my example here wasn't the best because this was also a number one and a number two, but these are different number ones and number twos, if that makes sense. All right, so let's see how that works. I'll copy some some macros that I use. I, hopefully they'll fit in the description. Um, I'll, I'll copy some into the video description for this video so that you can get some more ideas. But these are freely available on the internet and you can also find them and, and make them uh, readily enough yourself. All right, so forward slash parentheses fraction. And we've got two options. So let's make it a bit more interesting. Let's put X squared and let's put y cubed y cubed down here just to see how it works basically okay we're ending a sentence there a bit of a funny sentence so i better put a full stop there and there we go so i think with pfrac here that's not only it's a bit more human readable but it also saves us a few keystrokes and of course you know down the track you could imagine i don't really think this would happen but you might write and they say oh we don't want uh, round brackets we want square brackets in this journal and then all you would need to do is change it here in your 
uh, macro definition. And then every time you um, encounter that in your code, it's going to come out as square brackets like that. All right, hopefully that was helpful.